they were still nowhere near the mysterious tree they were supposed to find. But the voice in their memories encouraged them. It was wise in matters of root and rock, and it could sense the soil under their feet changing. Step by step, they were getting closer.
what was this monstrous creature? Was this one of the cylinder servants, the ones the elder had warned them of? Its very form terrified the Trevor. Even the voice and their memory seemed frightened of it. And then, somehow, the Trebum remembered the creature's name. It was called the Mathematician. The mathematician vanished as quickly as he had appeared. Back to... To what? What lay behind the cylinder? What was this strange groove in the ground? It seemed artificial, like something made to contain water. But all it contained were these large rolling machines. Who had built these things and why? They were not servants of the cylinder, that much was clear. Finally, the weeping trees that the Elder had told them to find were within the Trebum's grasp. But though the Trebum were happy, they realized that they faced a new challenge. The ripe fruit were floating out of reach, and the others were enclosed in a hard shell. They would have to find a way to crack them open. Even with the ability to float, overcoming the cylinder would have to be done very carefully. What they needed was a geyser that was well positioned, close to the cylinder, when it lay still. Or their plan would never work. They would have to keep looking, and meanwhile they would try not to think about what sort of monster could kill one of the flying serpents.
inside the strange giant's mind. The voice that spoke to the Trebum seemed different. It was less like a memory, more like something alive. But there were so many other voices too, lost in this place. I remember the mountains of my home, the vast forests, the clouds hanging low overhead, the cities in the valleys where the rivers ran. I remember the faces of my children and the songs we sang when the stars rose high. But I have forgotten the names of all these things, and slowly one melts into the other. My children will become mountains, the forests will become songs, and then all will become one and be nothing. There was something hidden in this place and the voice wanted the Trebum to find it. I remember a city built in the desert in defiance of thirst. When night fell, it shone like a jewel, and even the stars envied its brightness. Poets and scientists gathered from around the world, and its great observatories scoured the sky for wisdom and beauty. That is where we first saw the new star. Each voice was a memory, a song from a forgotten time, slowly fading. But some of these memories were Trebum memories, memories of things that Trebum had once been capable of. Perhaps, the voice suggested, these could be reclaimed. I remember how our towers stretched out to the sky, yearning for the stars. They were symbols of our best and our worst. I remember our voices echoing in the canyons as we fought for change, for a world that was different. Then it came, and the towers fell and there was no more difference. Where are our voices now? Where are our songs? I only hear one, and it is eternal. As the memories return to the Trebon, old abilities stolen by the cylinder were finally restored but there was so much more the voice had answers but it was weakening frightening as it was the trebum would have to come back This was a place of death and nothingness. There were no answers to be found here. The voice and their memories urged them to return to the lands of the living. A profound feeling of futility overcame the Trevor. 
Despite having miraculously survived their encounter with the mathematician, they were back to where they'd started. To make matters worse, ahead of them lay the cold and snowy lands of the tundra. Not a very nice place for Trebum, who were not meant to live in the cold. They would have to push forward against all odds and pray that they could find help. If the Trebum were going to deal with this terrible cold, they needed to find a mutation that would keep them warm. Their memory suggested that the answer lay in the odd little purple furball that grew where the beautiful snow corals rose from the ground. 